Hi, this is Steve from 6WZ. Had a bit of discussion about the possible cause of failures on the coupling capacitor on the YCCC uh, high impedance preamps used in the uh, nine circle array. This is my uh, uh, remote location. You'll see that transmit um, array here, there's um, a parasitic element in the foreground and the shunt fed tower in the background. And um, the nine circle array is located right here. This is the beginning of it. Had the tape measure out. I'm about 80 feet. I, I didn't realize it was that close. About 80 feet from the uh, what I call the southwest parasitic element, and then it'd be a further 60 feet to the uh, actual shunt-fed tower. Um, and then there's the uh, central uh, element as well. Let's do some experiments here. I got thinking about this and I thought, well, you know, if indeed um, I was having a failure from that blocking capacitor because of high uh, RF voltage across it, uh, then I ought to be able to measure it. Be honest with you, initially I thought, well, I'll build a current meter and try and use a current meter and then derive the voltage. And I thought, well, heck, it'd be a whole lot simpler if I just directly measured the voltage. Uh, after all, if the voltage is high enough to uh, fail a 60 volt uh, uh, rated capacitor. I ought to be able to uh, read that. So, hey, uh, let me show you the setup here and uh, we'll uh, do some experiments here. Here's the test setup I uh, decided to use. Uh, basically, I just built a, a little uh, diode uh, detector, a little rectifier circuit, um, and uh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff online to, you know, just to uh, provide some background and detail on it. Now, a simple little uh, 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 d detector. I, I think I've actually used a silicon diode. A germanium might be better, but uh, anyway, a little coupling capacitor, a rectifier, 100k resistor, and another uh, capacitor just to uh, smooth things out a bit. Uh, you know, it's been suggested that, you know, especially if you're using a 10 mega ohm voltmeter, that a 100k resistor should uh, provide reliable um, data. Here's what I did. I actually put, I, I measured, um, I actually measured the output from my signal generator set for 20 volt peak to peak, and I got a exactly, uh, uh, you know, 9.56 volts um, rectified um, DC uh, peak voltage, which is what it should be. Uh, you know, there's probably a bit of a voltage drop because of the um, across the diode. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hook that up uh, directly across the base of the vertical from the vertical to ground. And we're going to see what voltage we get when I transmit. Uh, what I've done is I got my laptop set up here. And I basically tethered my laptop um, to my phone data plan so that I can access the remote. And literally, I can just, um, uh, I can just uh, key the transmitter while I'm sitting here. So I'm going to do that here uh, right now. Let me get my cursor here. So you can see we've got no voltage. There I am keying the transmitter right now. And you can see I got about 40, 44 volts uh, currently. Uh, now, that's with the array in Omni. Now, if I beam to the northwest, that's you activating uh, the array, one of the parasitics, and then it's sort of beaming sort of more this direction, as it were. And I'll transmit again. And you can see there, we're actually up to uh, 50 volts. Uh, which is would be a peak uh, voltage, not peak to peak. Peak to peak would be uh, double that. Uh, I must confess, I'm thinking that that's on the edge of perhaps not being a problem. Um, I, I'm going to have to do some thinking about this. Um, you know, um, you know, as I say, peak to peak voltage might be 100 volts, which would exceed the DC rating of the capacitor, but. Um, uh, you know that on a on a on any one cycle, it's only going to be about 40 or 50 volts, which is less than the uh, rating of the capacitor. Let me do one more experiment here, just out of interest. So I'm going to walk uh, about you know whatever it is. 60, I think these elements are 60 feet apart in the array. So I'm going to walk and look at the center element now, which is you know basically a further 60 feet away, and see what that does to the voltage um, on that element. All right, I just moved over to the central element here. I got the same setup. We got the laptop here that I can remotely use to key the transmitter, and let's see what we get here. I haven't changed anything. I'm still uh, beaming in the same direction. I'm going to key the transmitter here, and we've got 30, uh, 36, 37 volts. So you know we've lost about 20 volts in the 60 feet, which I don't know. Maybe that makes sense. The inverse square as uh, with distance as we go away. So you now still. Uh, Gosh, I don't know what to say. I, I, I guess I, I did this experiment with, I don't want to say hopes, but I was kind of hoping that, I guess I can say that I, 
that, you know, that the voltage would have been more obvious, greater, like maybe 100, 200 volts or something. And then I, you know, it would have been very clear that, well, obviously, or not obviously, but highly likely that that's been the cause of these uh, capacitor failures. I guess I'm left thinking the voltage is high, uh, you know, it's, but not that high that I can be, uh, you know, certain or conclude with, uh, with certainty that this is the cause of those um, coupling capacitor failures. Anyway, fun experiment out here at the uh, remote. Steve, V6WZ. I was about to upload that video and I just realized I should maybe provide some quick context here as to the issue in case others haven't been following this uh, issue with these high Z uh, preamplifiers. Um, this is the blocking capa uh, rather coupling capacitor, this 0.1 microfarad or 100 nanofarad uh, capacitor, which is the one that's uh, failing. And if you'll notice in this circuit, um, you know, it's uh, through this 100K resistor to ground would uh, represent the impedance, although not entirely. Uh, you know, five picofarads is about, uh, I think on 80, 160 meters is about 100 and, I don't know what it is, maybe... Uh, 17k or so so perhaps in you know in parallel you know maybe the input impedance is really only around 15k or so at uh, on 160 meters but anyway this is the capacitor which has uh, been been failing and you know there are these little little square guys and you know um you know they're you know they're not completely open but you know they i'll just put it on the ohm meter here but you know this one here for example it's uh 25k so it's you know it's leaky as you know they're they're leaking and what's hap what i noticed happening here is sometimes the amps would still perform okay uh, but um, and that one's 23k you'll notice this guy here but anyway they, the amps might perform and you might they might still be okay but uh, what i did notice on two of the amps that failed uh, they started to develop intermodern noise and i suspect that's because the dielectric is kind of like uh, not fully broken down and starting to almost diode uh, diode rectify so anyway you know so here's the thing um i reckon there could be three reasons for for this failure one could be um a, a lightning uh, strike you know a high voltage event you know obviously discharging uh you know through the resistor to ground and uh, breaking down the dielectric my one thought on that though is um why first of all only three amps well okay that could be because perhaps the lightning strike or the stringer streamer was just close by uh, but also, you know, nothing else in the amp went at all. I mean, it was just that capacitor. So, I don't know, I would think if it was a high energy event, it might have taken out more than that. But anyway, that's a possibility. The other possibility is uh, wind static, uh, you know, uh, you know, developing a high uh, potential on the vertical through, through wind. You know, that's a very common thing we all know on our towers. But, you know, I always thought, put that down to a higher structure, you know, structure that's a lot taller, you know, develops a lot of uh, static. Um, but, you know, I suppose that's a possibility as well, you know, and it breaks down uh, the dielectric. I might su submit, well, why again, in my case, only uh, three of them. And of course, the third possibility is RF overload, and that's the experiment I just did. And gosh, I can't, as I said, say that that's a, that's a conclusive reason. Though, you know, um, it did, does indicate that there is fairly high voltage um, present, but not really high enough to take out these guys uh, based on their rating. I mean, they're rated at uh, 63 volts, I can read on it. So theoretically, they shouldn't, uh, shouldn't break down. So anyway, you know, there's some solutions. Uh, the solutions, first of all, would be, you know, one, uh, one solution is the, the one I've taken, which is to insert a relay in here, which is always grounded unless the, the amp is powered up. Then, you know, as long as the amp is powered down, you know, the antenna terminal is shorted and it should uh, pr protect the components. You know, a second, second option would be, uh, you know, just put in a gas discharge tube like, uh, like these guys. Um, you know, they, you know, I got some, you know, I've, I, I use these a lot on my, my beverages, you know, both termination and feed ends, you know, you could slap one of these puppies across the, uh, the, the antenna and, um, you know, it should protect it. These are 50 volt, uh, breakdown guys. I think these are 140 volt breakdown guys. You know, the one issue though is, you know, the little relays that I used, uh, in my redesigned circuit. I mean, these, these guys are about uh, $2 and 40 cents. Uh, for the relay, the gas discharge tube, these guys aren't cheap, you know, they're around $3. Yeah, heck, it's not a lot of difference. Certainly putting a, gist, a discharge tube across the input would be pretty easy. You don't even need to retro your, your amp. You just put it on the, on the terminals of the uh, vertical. 
One thing I got to say is, look, uh, I've received emails uh, subsequent to posting my first video from four other uh, individuals that have had this, uh, this problem. So, you know, uh, please, I encourage you, if there's anyone else out there that has some ideas that maybe have these amps or other similar amps and have had problems like this, you know, share your thoughts as to what the issue might be. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, you know, if you have these amps, you know, just pop your, you, to test them, if, if you haven't, uh, just go out in the field. You don't even have to take the amps off. Just put your multimeter across the terminals of the uh, vertical, even with the amp still connected. And what you ought to see is it should read open, obviously. And if you have a capacity setting, you should read 100 nanofarads across there. Uh, if you don't, if you know you see something like 100K plus, which means that you know you're you're looking through this resistor because it's open. Uh, you know, that's an indicator you got some problems with that cap. Another thing you'll see, by the way, if the amp is powered up at the time, you're going to see some voltage there, right? Because you know you, this this uh, coupling capacitor isn't blocking the, uh, the 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 voltage that's going to the op amp. So you'll see that as well uh, with the voltage setting on your multimeter. So pretty easy way to check your your amps to see if there's. Um, a problem. Anyway, you know, share your thoughts if you know how you have any ideas. I'm kind of stumped here as to be sure what caused caused these the problems with with my amps. Uh, the thing is, you know, with my new redesign with the relays across the input, I I kind of covered off on any eventuality. As long as the amps are powered off, I should be protected. Anyway, thanks, Steve. B6WZ.